I need advice on what to improve on my daily producing. I get emails like this all the time because I like to fix your beats. So Novak sent me this email saying that they've been producing for about eight to nine months and they want my advice to help them improve their production. So here's 12 ways that you can instantly make your beats better. Ooh, I honestly think that's one of the best beats anyone has ever sent me to fix. First of all, your melody is good. But when we get to your verse here, it gets a little bit repetitive. And I think you could make some really simple changes to, to the, what you have here just to make it more interesting. And my favorite way of doing that is sampling myself. So you already have this rendered out and we can just take it and pitch it up an octave. There's some gross frequencies, so we want to EQ those out. But that just gives you so much more variation in your arrangement. And it's going to make your beat more interesting in general. You're doing some really weird stuff with your 808. I get it, you want to get creative, but genuinely less is more. Honestly, all we really need to do is just kind of put these back on the root note. Your progression is just going 1-6, so you're playing some notes that you probably shouldn't be playing down there. That kind of makes the bass line sound a little bit dissonant. Yeah, that already works. And on the fourth bar, that's where you can get more creative with it. Another thing you could do with your hi-hats. Play around with the pitch a little bit more. And when you do that too, you're going to want to bring down the velocity. So just kind of slope it downwards or upwards, whichever you want. You could also add in a few more drums like perks, chants, or open hats. They're pretty small in the grand scheme of things, but the small things add a lot of bounce. One thing I really like to do whenever I have a snare roll is get some panning going on. Just kind of get something interesting with the panning, whether it's just from side to side or whatever you want to do. And you can do something similar with the velocity, but be intentional with it. So for example, here, I want to bring this down. I want this roll to be a little bit less impactful. And then I want this to kind of build up, rise back into that next drop. Whoa, in general, your snare is just like stupidly loud. In general, you just need to turn down all your drums a little bit. If you're not as experienced as Novak, don't worry because Drogza sent me in a beat as well and Drogza has only been making beats for about a month and Drogza just wants to make some hard hitting beats. Let's give it a listen. Nursery rhyme type beat was that. First things first, your sound selection is gonna make you a much better producer. And no shade to FL Keys, but FL Keys is not the best sound selection. Maybe you don't have something expensive, but flex. It's a free option in FL Studio and it's a better option than FL Keys. And there's pianos in it. Like the Bosendorf for life. <laughs> Honestly, you kind of got a funky bounce here. I'm here for the bounce, I'm not here for the Bosendorf for life. I think to really sure up your melody, it would be good to add in some bass notes just because that would give it some depth. And to turn this into like a different chord, because you're kind of just repeating the same thing, I'm going to raise this note up to the 6 so we can just make this a 1-6 progression. And for hard hitting beats, it's better to have your bass notes playing the same note. And 
And another thing you want to do with your piano melody is you want to make sure you humanize it because that's going to give it a little bit more of a natural acoustic feel. I see you did absolutely no mixing because your piano sound is so dry. We want to we want to throw some reverb on it just to make it a little bit more wet. And to get it to cut through the mix, I like to throw some fresh air on it. By the way, it's a completely free plugin. And you've got a bit of low end there that might get a little bit muddy with your 808, so we're gonna cut that. Now in terms of expanding on this melody, because it's a little bit basic, there's a lot of things you can do. Like you can just add in some kinds of effect sounds or really anything to add some texture to what you have. I don't know, I feel like uh, adding in a violin is the easy slam dunk here. And you don't even have to get that crazy with it. Like you can do something really simple just like that and it will work. One thing to keep in mind with your sound selection is when you have a higher BPM, you want to use a shorter 808. And when you have a slower BPM, using a longer 808 is better to do. But in this instance, your 808's just too short in general. So it kind of leaves that low end feeling like it's missing space. Whoa, bro, you're not even playing in key. What? Stop, don't do that. Preferably, like, if you don't know what to do, your, your bass notes are pretty safe. Typically, like, chord notes will work out well for you. Yeah, doing this roll here makes no sense at all. This would be more fitting if you put it somewhere on the fourth bar. When you have nothing but fruity limiter on your master, you're more so just dulling out the sound that you're trying to get. So instead, you'll want to put a soft clipper on there. You can use a limiter too, but you want to have the soft clipper coming first. And that's just going to add some saturation and that's what's going to give it that hard hitting sound. If you really want to do some crazy stuff, you can throw in some like 808 rolls here and there. Kind of just add in some syncopation. And then on your last little 8 bars, that's where you really want to kind of throw in some variation. So with your 808, you can go up to like a, a note in the chord or something that should be kind of harmonious with, with what you have going on. The 6 here should be. And then, I don't know, let's just throw in like triplet rolls. Now your hi-hat pattern is really confused. Like you need some kind of rhythmic structure. It's fine if you don't want to have the two-step throughout. You're also doing like really weird rolls all over. I don't really like what you're doing at all. What I typically like to do is I like to start out with a two-step pattern. Maybe you can cut a note here and there. Think about some places you want to add in some rolls. You can keep it pretty simple to start. And then whenever you're adding in some of these rolls, play around with the velocity of some of these notes. Because a big part of drums is how hard they're hitting. And then once you have some rolls going on, you can play around with the pitch of these a little bit. And once you have two bars of just something you like, you can copy it over and then move some of the rolls around, kind of change up that, that syncopation of what you already have. And then maybe add in like a little extra, you don't need to get too crazy with it. Now you have this snare and you're just kind of doing things with it. Like the rhythm here makes no sense. I don't know why you're trying to do like a drill rhythm. So instead, like you can kind of like build some rhythm around where you have things going on. But a really big thing with drums is kind of having like a contrast in sounds. So taking some of these drum sounds you have and spreading them out over more sounds can give you kind of a more complex sound overall. And that's also why you want to add in more sounds in general other than just an 808 hi-hat and clap.
another thing you can really do to take your melody to that next level is add some kinds of effects to it. Grow speed is always an option. Ooh! You can also add some things like Portal on there too. Now in terms of arrangement, you really want to have a lot more going on. Bro, no. I'm sorry, but this, I don't like this. I get what you're trying to do. I really don't like it. So personally, I just feel like you'd be better off using a riser. Now your drums here, we're going to break this up. To add a little bit more variation, you can throw in like a beat cut every now and then. And for arrangement's sake, I always think it's a good idea to just to cut something out at the end to kind of segue into that next section. By the way, if you want to submit your beats for these types of videos, all the information you need is down in the pinned comment. And don't forget to check out last week's Beat Fix video.